medicine, a number of mind-body specialists who will uh, put their opinion on, on particular cases, physical therapists, acupuncturists, our massage therapists, holistic nurses, and then a place of wellness director, which is our integrative medicine delivery center. So with this whole integrative approach, we're really able to provide information to patients that will be able to tailor a plan to be able to meet each patient's needs. And with this, we're going to be able to get uh, the best care for patients. Now, one of the biggest challenges for, for integrative oncology, I believe, at the moment is listed here. There's a lack of understanding of what it is. There's a lack of communication. And there's, of course, concerns of level of evidence. When a medical oncologist says to me, I don't believe in alternative medicine, it's clear that they don't really understand what we're doing in integrative oncology. Because by saying they don't believe in alternative medicine, means that they don't believe in many of the treatments that they are giving. The, the 65 plus percent of conventional oncology drugs that came from plants and natural products as the source of origin. So what is critical that we do in the field as we are doing and as is happening in China as well is that we need to do high quality clinical research, preclinical research to be able to explore the use of what is happening in these different indigenous cultures around the world in their practice of medicine to be able to provide the best care possible and ultimately hopefully try and cure cancer if not at least control it as a chronic disease. Thank you for your attention.
300 TCM doctors here who you should speak with, particularly about those sorts of questions, and we can start to have these open dialogues and bridges and understanding each other's medicine. And uh, Lorenzo here. I actually want to make a comment to your master slides. It sounds like you are saying it is a fault for mainstream medicine not to have an open mind about the TCM or other alternative medicine. Uh, if you look the question back, is what do you try to communicate? What is the quality of information you have to make them comments? If you don't have this, we can have a part of paper. It's not going to reach other uh, to comment our topic uh, in, 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 in so-called uh, mainstream medicine. So I think that no matter what you say, if you don't have evidence, you don't have quality information, you're not going to reach them. And uh, how are we coming back? We talk in Chinese medicine diagnosis. What is the quality control of the Chinese medicine diagnosis? If we have a three different Chinese medicine practitioners, will they give you the same diagnosis? If they not, why should I believe what you say? Because you, are, you don't even agree among yourself. How can I come up with it? In the what you find out, number one. In talking Chinese medicine, again, the quality of oh, Sorry, I, I'm trying to be very critical. Because I think that you, we have to realize we are high type very different work. Just let me answer that briefly because uh, Tommy raises some very important issues here. Level of evidence. I would argue often that even when you present the level of evidence to the skeptical conventional practitioners in the West, they are still skeptical. There are many randomized placebo-controlled trials of acupuncture for nausea, for other symptoms, and the response I get from many colleagues who are very intelligent is, I'm skeptical. So I think we're still going to have that problem, in particular with natural products, and I think in particular with the research that you're doing, unfortunately, that you may have these wonderful findings, and we all hope that the phase two trial is wonderful that we're going to hear about today in terms of the outcome. And there's going to be many of, of conventional oncologists who are just not going to believe it, and they're going to say, well, what about the standardization? They're going to say, you know, how do you know what the mechanism is? What's the molecule? And it's, it's, it's complicated. Um, so it's it's uh, it's not going to be as simple as the evidence, I think, unfortunately. Now the thing about TCM diagnosis, you're absolutely right. There is a problem with quality control, but we can't say we're studying Chinese medicine unless we study Chinese medicine. We're studying reductionistic, we're doing novel drug discovery, we're looking at herbs and plants, but that's not Chinese medicine. We're using what Chinese doctors use to treat patients, but not in the way they treat patients. So if we discover that some treatments are useful, um, that's going to be great. If we find they're not useful, that doesn't mean Chinese medicine doesn't work. It means that that one plant doesn't work. What? Done in reduction is too Well, okay, I'm done. And uh, thank you. Uh,